Let us consider a case where a bullet is being fired at a cart and completely sticks to the cart at the collision located at A. And then the cart, as a result of having that bullet hit it, is propelled forward until it rises to the up a hill to the point on mark B at some height H above the initial height. In this complicated series of events, what was conserved at the in the first case, the collision point A, and in the second case, as the cart moves from A to B. In each case, is it mechanical energy only, momentum only, both energy and momentum, neither energy nor momentum, or is it the case that more information is needed? Let's answer separately for the collision at location A and as the cart rises up from A to B. First of all, at location A, when the collision has occurred, we should take note that the bullet has been embedded in the cart. That means that the two objects have stuck together. This signifies that an inelastic collision has occurred. In this case, it is not possible for mechanical energy to be conserved, but it is possible for momentum to be conserved. In fact, it is always the case that momentum is conserved because this is an inertial system during that collision. So the correct answer, the first part, is that momentum only is conserved. So I put that in red to match the red of the, the writing here for at collision A. Now, as a cart goes from A to B, the cart and the, the bullet do not define an inertial system because there is a net external force acting on them from the force of gravity pulling down. So momentum is not a conserved quantity. However, it is the case that the mechanical energy is conserved if we consider mechanical energy as the sum of kinetic energy plus potential. And as the cart goes from A to B, its initial kinetic energy is converted to potential energy as it gets up to B and it comes to a stop. Let's examine this process in more detail. Again, we will assume that the collision which took place between the bullet and the cart was completely inelastic. At the collision, momentum will be conserved, and we may write that the mass of the bullet times its initial speed equals the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the cart times the final speed of the pair. Therefore, we can solve and say that the final speed is equal to the ratio of the bullet mass over the sum of the two masses times the bullet's initial speed and we can ask how far up the hill will this system go. As the cart moves from A to B, energy is conserved, and we may write that the initial kinetic energy, which is the one-half times the sum of the masses times their combined speed, their speed squared, equals their combined mass times G times H. So it's kinetic energy before the, the rise up to B equals potential energy after they have risen up to B. Here we may solve and say that h is equal to v prime squared over 2g, but we already had a solution for what is v prime, and we may insert using the known quantities of the two masses and the initial speed of the bullet. And we have the ratio of m, little, the bullet mass over the sum of the masses squared times v squared over 2g. The ratio of v squared over 2g is much like what we saw in earlier kinematics problems for how high a projectile will go, except that it's now being modified by this ratio of the masses squared, which is always a number less than one. And it reflects that the bullet cannot go as high if it has to drag the car heavy cart along with it. There's another possible solution here, which is not necessarily uh, realistic for a bullet hitting a cart, but it's instructive to paint the difference between inelastic and elastic collisions. Let's instead imagine that the bullet was, that hit the cart was not a, going to suffer an inelastic collision, but rather an elastic one. So maybe the better example is to say that this is a high-speed tennis ball hitting the cart. For an elastic collision, then at the point of collision, the initial momentum equals a final momentum, and we'll again have 
of uh, the velocity after the collision equals the ratio of the mass to m1 over m1 plus m2 and that's because in this case we have to use the formula for an elastic collision where we set v2 the initial speed of the cart equal to zero as the cart moves from a to b it is going to again conserve total mechanical energy which is to say the initial kinetic energy equals the final potential energy but since the ball has or the bullet has bounced off of the cart it's only the cart itself which is moving and we write one half times the cart mass b times b2 prime squared has to equal the cart mass times g times h so now again h is v2 v prime squared over 2g and if we insert for our solution for what is v prime we have 2m squared over the sum of the masses squared times v squared over 2g notice in this case that the cart will in fact go higher it will go four times as high as it would if the, the bullet was interacting with the cart in an inelastic collision and that simply reflects that less of the energy was lost in the inelastic collision to making up heat so although this is not a very exa good example for uh, a bullet it just paints the picture or the difference in picture that exists between an elastic and an inelastic collision more energy is dissipated into other forms in an inelastic collision than an elastic one and the elastic one retains more energy in the form of mechanical energy